I'd like to take a moment of silence to remember those who gave the, the supreme sacrifice in defense of our freedom. Thank you, and good morning everyone. I am Hector Kaufman, Commander of American Legion Post 912 here in Rouse's Point. I want to thank you all for participating in this year's Veterans Day ceremonies. This year, our local veterans service organizations decided to combine our efforts in order to bring about a greater awareness of the sacrifices of all veterans of all wars. Now with that being said, I'd like to welcome my fellow comrades and guests. Father Clyde Lewis of St. Patrick's and St. Joseph's Churches, Pastor Al Johnson from the Moore's Methodist, United Methodist Church, the Honorable George Rivers, Mayor of the Village of Rouse's Point, members of the VFW Great Shazy River Post 1418, Earl Robinson, Commander. Post 1418, Ladies Auxiliary, Lucy Mayo, President. Members of VFW Post 8722, Rouse's Point, Tim Wilcox, Commander. <laughs> Members of Champlain American Legion Post 767, Al Strack, Commander. Post 767, Ladies Auxiliary, Doris Valenzi, President. Members of Moore's American Legion, Ralph J. Davidson, Post 538, Winston Decos, Commander. Members of American Legion, Russell V. Childs, Post 769, Stevie Bowman, Commander. Members of Canadian Legion, Branch 244, Marcel Giroux, Commander. The members of Rouse's Point American Legion Auxiliary, Geraldine Wright, President. And the members of American Legion Montgomery Post 912, of which I am extremely proud to be Commander. And now with Father Lewis will lead us with the invocation. Father Lewis. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, be with us today as we remember America's men and women in uniform. For one Veterans Day, our nation pays tribute to them. As we recall the service of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, we are reminded that the defense of freedom comes with great loss and sacrifice. Help us give thanks to those who have served freedom's cause. Help us salute those of our armed forces who this day 
are confronting our adversaries abroad. Help us honor the men and women who left America's shores but did not live to be thanked as veterans. May our country always remember them. You have told us that there is no greater love than when a human being lays down his life for another. All of America's veterans have placed our nation's security before their own lives, creating a debt that we can never fully repay. They represent the best of America, and they deserve the best America can give them. Protect and strengthen those who live. Grant eternal rest to those who gave their lives for all of us. We ask this of you, Heavenly Father, you who give us everything that is good. Amen. Now, if you will remain uncovered as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I'd like to ask Mayor Rivers to read the governor's proclamation uh, commemorating this year's Veterans Day ceremony. Stated in New York Executive Chamber, proclamation, whereas every year on November 11th, the communities across this state and the nation join to observe Veterans Day in remembrance of the brave men and women who suffered less served in America's armed forces defending our freedom, security, and democracy. They are the most noble citizens who have made the greatest sacrifice for the cause of peace and deserve and will always have the respect and the appreciation of all citizens. And whereas on Veterans Day we pause to commemorate contributions of all who have served in various branches of our military, those who have passed away, and those who are still with us as their families do each day. And whereas Americans have been blessed with abundance of such men and women who normally battled tyranny and oppression in two world wars, and those who fought in Korea, Vietnam, Middle East, and today our men and women in uniform are again at war fighting terrorism and standing diligently in defense of America and our cherished way of life. And whereas veterans, today we salute their courage and dedication to the defense of democracy and the sovereignty of freedom loving nations around the world, recognizing it is the extraordinary person who is willing to step in harm's way to protect others. And whereas our veterans truly embrace the values of service, dedication, discipline, and fully appreciate the benefits of life and liberty, and all Americans have found in these special citizens leadership, courage, and determination needed to overcome the threat to our nation and our ideals of democracy. And whereas we owe veterans an immeasurable debt of gratitude for what they have done for us and the people and the nation and for all they continue to do to make the world better and safer for future generations of Americans. As today we honor their legacy, the selfish contributions made to countless military veterans, especially the freedom they have bestowed upon this country and the many rewards it brings to each of our lives. Therefore, now therefore I, Ellen Spencer, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2007, Veterans Day in the Empire State, signed by the Governor of the State of New York. Thank you, George. Uh, those that do have seating, feel free to sit. Today, we are assembled to commemorate the services of veterans of all wars. <coughs> we remember how men and women set aside their civilian pursuits to serve their nation's cause, defending the freedom of mankind 
and preserving our precious American heritage. We believe our strengths on the field of battle and on the supply lines lay in the justice of our cause against the forces of evil. We believe our determination made us better warriors because we fought with our minds and our hearts as well as our bodies. We recognize service to our country and her cause does not end with the termination of military service. We continue our endeavors in behalf of an honorable world peace with a feeling of profound gratitude to God and to the men and women who gave their lives as their part of the cost of this noblest of causes. Out of blood and sweat, we learned of purpose, sacrifice, tolerance, bravery, and discipline. These are the foundation stones upon which a great nation is built. In our continuing quest for an honorable world peace, we must cultivate these virtues. And now I'd like to introduce Jerry Wright, President of the Ladies Auxiliary. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. The waging of war involves more than just the combatants who fight to the death on the field of battle. The fighting forces begin at the fireside and in our hometowns. The repercussions of war's terrible brutality have chilled the heart and dimmed the hopes and dreams of many a loved one left behind on the home front. While the horrors of the battlefield may not have been our experience, we have lived with the terrifying loneliness created to answer an aggressor's challenge. In waging war, we have moved forward with a unity of purpose which made us strong, forgetting pettiness, egotism, and pride. Our hearts beat in tune with those in other nations fighting for freedom and the dignity and opportunity of mankind. In our constant quest for honorable world peace, there is a need for unity of purpose if we are truly are to move toward a brighter tomorrow. Thank you, Jerry. Now I'll introduce Earl Robinson, commander of VFW Post 1418. If there be glory in war, it is the almost incredible spirit which it brings forth. Those who offer their lives sacrifice their all with glorious abandonment. Heroism becomes contagious, yet too, in warfare, too often greed and brutality are infectious. Too often it is the latter which persists in the peace that follows. Let us strive to see the same spirit of self-sacrifice that is cultivated in war carry over and be exhibited in peace. It behooves us to raise new standards of success, to inspire our youth in peace as youth have been inspired in war. Public honor must be given where public honor is due, not to the manipulator of a market, the seeker after profits, either power or position, but rather, let us honor the heroes of science who alleviate human suffering and carry to the greater height the standard of civilization. President JFK once said, and I quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Let us honor those who in public service seek not how much they may secure from the nation, but how much they can give. Let us also honor those who devote their lives to that education, which will lead our children to live and laugh and learn and love as we have only dreamed of doing. Let us honor those veterans who carry into ordinary affairs of life a noble idealism and a sincere capacity for self-devotion. Let us translate the devotion of war into a devotion of peace. Let us have a will to live as well as die for our country. Thank you, Earl. Al Strack, Commander, Post 767, Champlain, New York.
Mike Young. Courage is one of the virtues born of war. The courage of individuals in the face of danger and the courage of nations to protect the weak and punish the aggressor. There is bravery to be shown in peace as well. May we recapture the courage which turned wilderness into cities and bound men together under government. We can turn slums into comfortable homes. We can turn uncertainty into certainty. We can reach new heights of civilization and opportunity for men and women of this nation if we have the courage to expect and to work for a better way of life. There can be romance in this challenge also. The bravery that flight fights the political, social, economical, and spiritual gains may be difficult to practice, may be unsung when achieved, but it is all the more worth striving for. Thank you, Al. Bob Superna, BFW Post 1418. War has taught us the lesson of obedience to command. The game is more than the player, and the ship is more than the crew. There is a greater discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve this virtue of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. That is, obedience to the laws we ourselves make the voluntary discipline of citizenship. Under our system of government, we may change the laws by majority rule. We may persuade our neighbors to new theories or new courses. We may advocate in free elections the choice of veterans or plans. As good citizens, we follow the choice of the majority, whether that choice is individuals or not. This is the virtue of the discipline which must be ours in peace. This is a lesson we must learn at home in school, on the playing fields, in the organizations, in the community, and in the nation. It is a lesson of voluntary obedience to the decisions of the majority. We must not be unmindful either of the conclusions of other peoples from whom we have joined in the quest for an honorable world peace. This is a higher order of disciplines. Gerald Mayo, post 767. Thank you, Alan. Good morning. A new front has opened in the war on terrorism. There is a greater discipline we must now pursue if we are to preserve the virtues of obedience in our quest for an honorable world peace. This is a war for the future of civilization. Every bit as much as the war against Nazism and fascism. The young men and women who are fighting terrorism in Iraq and around the world are carrying a great burden of history on their shoulders. We pray for them, not only because they are our sons, daughters, husbands, risking their lives, but also to ensure that future generations live in a free and democratic society. In time of peace, we can use the ennobling virtues of war and put behind us its ugliness and suffering. In peace, we shall go forward together to scale new heights of achievement and unity of purpose. In sacrifice for the common good, in tolerance for those of different faiths and creeds, and bravery to fight for social economic gain and to discipline of economic gains. And in the discipline of good citizenship, we shall, not, we shall move forward in the sight of God as a strong nation in a peaceful world. Thank you.
Commander, salute the veterans of all wars. Legionnaires, attend to part four. Ready. Order! Order! Pull. Well, thank you everyone. Uh, now before we close, I'd like to remind everyone to join us for lunch at the American Legion home on Pratt Street. Uh, now I will ask Pastor L. Johnson to give the benediction and uh, I thought he loved singing. And that's what, but I was informed yesterday that he doesn't sing. Uh, but I'm still going to ask him to, I just notifying him now of this, I'm asking him to lead us after the benediction in singing God Bless America. I don't feel he can get out of it now. <laughs> Thank you, you might be sorry. <laughs> Let us hear these words of final inspection. I received this yesterday and I believe it is most fitting for this occasion. This is anonymous, it comes via the internet. The Marines stood and faced God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shining just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, Marine, how shall I deal with you? Have you always turned the other cheek? To my church have you been true? The Marine squared his shoulder and said, No, Lord, I guess I ain't. Because those of us who carry guns can't always be a saint. I had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was tough. And sometimes I've been violent, 
because this world is awfully rough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime while the bills just got too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear. And sometimes, God forgive me, I wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here in heaven. They never wanted me around except to calm their fears. If you have a place for me here, Lord, if need be so grand, I never expected or had too much. But if you don't, I'll understand. There was silence all around the throne when the saints have often trod as the marine waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, you marine. You've bore your burdens well. Walk peacefully on heaven's streets. You've done your time in hell. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, this marine and many others too many others have fought for the freedom we enjoy and we all hope your people all around this earth will someday enjoy and that is our hope and is based on your holy promise for it is written in the book of Isaiah of a vision for your world let us hear from the book of Isaiah of the peaceable kingdom the wolf shall lie with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the snake, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. The word of God for us here this day. A story of our Savior, my Savior, Jesus the Christ, of a battle in World War I, when the English and the German were eye to eye and the war was raging, and it was Christmas Eve. They broke out in the singing of Silent Night, Holy Night, and that war was stopped. They came together in the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so in that great peace that we hope and pray and for so many have given their lives I close with these words of my Savior Jesus the Christ from the Gospel of St. John. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. May peace guide us in our lives. Amen. Let us join together with the help of the Holy Spirit in the singing of God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, and beside her and guide her to the night from the light of Thanks again, everyone. Take care. Good. Good. There you go. Thank you. Okay.